AM 630. W- 706 on WMR, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson, Larry O'Connor. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. And, uh, you know, we've talked in Petraeus. We're talking Fiscal Cliff. We're talking everything this morning. And uh, Joe, De- Joe DeGeneva is one of those guests who can speak to everything, well, anything and everything. I got about 100 questions for Joe, yeah. so let's get started. So thank goodness he's here. Hey, Joe, thanks for being here. Good morning, guys. So now, you know, of course, the Petraeus story is sort of turning the city upside down. I think it came out of nowhere. People were shocked by it Friday. Mm-hmm. And uh, and now, you know, the, the political commentariat gets to talk about it. All day Sunday, yesterday on the shows, they were discussing it. And there's a lot of questions, not only about the timing here, but uh, why the FBI didn't know about this ahead of time during the background check uh, process of Petraeus getting the job at the CIA, and and if the White House knew about this, and did they hold this information at the White House until it was politically uh, uh, appropriate for them or, or advantageous for them to let it out? What, what, are, what, are you, what are you hearing? Well, first of all, I don't think there's any way, if Petraeus went through a normal background check for a Senate confirmation hearing, that this could have been not found out about. I don't, I'm not sure this is confirmable by the Senate, though. Uh, it, the, the, the bottom line is, is that he his background check should have disclosed this. And if it didn't, uh, that means that it obviously was not a, a proper background check. D- we don't know if he took a polygraph, and of course if he did, there's always the catch-all question. Certainly the background papers that you fill out uh, for a job like this require you to disclose anything like this, uh, especially when you're getting a security clearance. Is there anything in your background uh, which would lead you to be compromised? So I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, I, the real questions now revolve around the FBI. Um, what, what did Mueller do? What kind of instructions were given to people? And if Mueller knew, the Attorney General knew. Believe me, the FBI director and the AG are on the same page all the time. So then the question has to be asked, Joe, if, if that's the case and the AG knows, then is it incumbent on the AG to fill the White House in on something like this? Uh, a- a- absolutely. Uh, There's no question that in the ordinary course of business, uh, you would absolutely tell the National Security Council, the National Security Advisor, uh, everyone involved in the process, Clapper, would be told immediately. And if they were not told, there is no question that the only reason they were not told was to make sure that the number of people who knew about this was limited so it could be kept quiet until after the election. So they had plausible deniability. Yeah, well, well, yes, absolutely. And but, but, but that really raises very serious questions about the FBI. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of glowing comments about Bob Mueller, the FBI director, and he's had a very good tenure. But remember what just happened. His term expired uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, and he was reappointed through special legislation. Remember, we went through J. Edgar Hoover, and we said nobody should serve for more than 10 years. Right. Bob served a full 10 years, and then because they were all tied up with fiscal matters and big problems in the war, they didn't want to confirm anybody else or couldn't find somebody. So the administration asked Congress, and Congress complied and gave him a new 10-year appointment. You know, people may look back on that and say, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe that was not a very good public policy decision. But we'll find out. We'll find out what the director instructed people to do. Because I can assure you, if you're Dianne Feinstein and Mike Rogers, yep. the, the chairman in the House, you are not happy. Let me, let me see if I can sort of bear down on this timeline. Because there are many stories that suggest this was first brought to the attention of the FBI four months ago. So that would have been, I, I guess, by, by my timing, July. Right. And by the way, that may have been roughly the time, according to uh, what we're reading, that the affair came to a close. Right. Interesting timing there. So the FBI begins their investigation. At what point would they then be required to bring this to the attention of the FBI director and the attorney general? Well, the FBI director is going to know right away. First okay. of all, they're not investigating. Once Petraeus's name comes up, there are rules and regulations about who has to be notified. Uh, the, the, uh, first of all, the House Intel Committee and the Senate Intel Committee are to be notified when someone's name yeah. even just comes up in an investigation. I have personal experience knowing that, uh, for example, somebody's name accidentally comes up on a wiretap. They're not doing anything wrong, but they happen to be a member of the House. That is told immediately to both 
intel committees, even though that person is doing nothing wrong. Well, that, that's sort of my point. I mean, if, if they began the investigation four months ago, you assume that Mueller knows, and at some point you assume that Mueller has to, has to inform the Attorney General of the United States about all this. That would and, be immediately. And so those people are in the know. Does, does, the pre, does the Attorney General have an obligation to go to the President and say, you know what, there may be a security concern about your director of Central Intelligence? Well, now, let me just tell you this. What did Petraeus do when it, be, when it was going to become public? He resigned. Yes, and he That's came clean rule. on everything. That means the president needs to know right away. If someone's going to resign as a result of the information that is being kept secret, that means the president should have been told, which no. means he wasn't told if he wasn't told. If he wasn't told, he was told purposely to create plausible deniability because of the election. So there are two things that concern me here. Number one, did the president know, and when did he know it? I hate to use that old (laughs) hackneyed (laughs) phrase. And then the second thing is, is I think Dianne Feinstein, who was on the Sunday talk shows, is right. They have questions for the FBI about why weren't the big four, the chairman and vice chairman of the House and Senate Intelligence Committee, informed about what was going on? Well, what's really fascinating here is, you know, Mike Rogers has been sort of AWOL on this. He's the Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Now, it's known widely that Mike, who is a former FBI agent, may I tell you, wants to be the director of Central Intelligence. Uh, huh. Why is he being so quiet? Man, I'd be out. I would be off the charts on this. Uh, yet he's he's decidedly silent, and it may it may signal that he's going to be rather meek in this. Which I, and I hope it's not the case. But the, the bottom line is, I was I thought Diane Feinstein yesterday on Fox was seething underneath. Yes, uh, she has been embarrassed. I mean, basically, what Mueller did to her was he tapped her on the head, said, "Listen, uh, little lady." Uh, this is just a man thing, a little affair going on, nothing of concern to you. Let me tell you something. Mueller better wear two <laughs> pairs of underwear. <laughs> yeah. goes up uh, you know what I, what I saw in, in watching Die Fight? Now, look, I may disagree with a lot of her politics, but I think she's sort of a stand-up gal. No, she I, is I, a very serious she's, statesman. She's a very yeah. serious she's woman. very embarrassed. And 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 I and, and I looked like she would. She looked like she was physically pained by she all was, of it. You know what? These are her people. These are the Democrats that did it to her. Yeah, these, and, she, and, these and, and these weren't the lowly Republicans. She got screwed by the president, the AG, and the FBI director. She is not happy, but she's also not vindictive. She tends to forget very quickly stuff like this. But I'll tell you something. I'd love to be in that closed hearing when she has an opportunity to ask Mueller why he didn't tell her. There is no way that an FBI director does not tell uh, the chairman and of both committees. By the way, remember, there's been this historical battle between the CIA and the FBI. And, you know, a guy like Mueller says, you know what, I'm not going to bring this up right away. I'm going to wait. That, that doesn't even calculate in something as serious as this. Remember, the rule is if you have to resign, that tells you how important the information is. This wasn't just some low-level right. thing. This wasn't some accident. This guy was subject to compromise, to blackmail, this was as bad as it gets. All right. I, uh, ten seconds. Literally just got ten seconds. Uh, Holder in or out? Is he going to stay or is he going to go? I don't see why he would stay. I assume yeah. he's going. Why, why in the world would he want to stay? Uh, all right. That's ten seconds. That's all you get. Well hey, listen. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Okay, guys. 